I'm Martha Broad. I'm the executive director of the MIT Energy Initiative. And I want to welcome you all to the 2014 C3E Symposium. This is our third year. <laughs> our third year co-hosting with the Department of Energy. And I want to stop for a moment and thank our wonderful, mighty staff, some of whom are still outside, but particularly Carter Smith and Debbie Keedian, who have worked tirelessly again this year to pull this off. So thank you. <laughs> and of course, our sponsors. Our sponsors are incredibly generous and important to us, and we thank them also. We would not be here without them. So C3E, Clean Energy Education and Empowerment. This symposium is about strengthening a network. This is our third year. We're going to continue to grow this network. It's an opportunity for us all to listen and learn from one another to get insights, and to get real resources that we can bring back with us to our day-to-day -day jobs. So C3E is part of a bigger DOE initiative. And DOE has been a real leader in the work to increase gender diversity in the energy industry. And of course, this means not just attracting, but also retaining women. And the fact is, we need each other. And we need smart and collaborative leadership to take us into the next century. Because you know we're all coming at the same big challenge. We need sustainable, affordable, and plentiful sources of clean energy. So this is a great group. And I'm very excited. There's great chemistry here. Not only do we have people at many different stages of their careers, we have our grad students who are doing the poster competition, which was so alluring that it was hard to get you all in here. Um, we have our mid-career awards, of course, in eight categories ranging from research to law and finance. And you're going to get to know our ambassadors. This is a group of really accomplished women who help with C3E. And in particular, they help make the tough decisions about who wins these awards. Um, so we also have great chemistry in the different approaches that various people are taking. We have different professions uh, represented in the room. We have corporate leaders like Barbara Berger from Chevron Corporation, who leads their Chevron Technology Ventures Group. We'll hear from Ann Berwick, who is the chair of the Department of Public Utilities here in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, we're going to hear from Shelley Paticha, who is with the Natural Resources Defense Council a very well-respected advocacy organization. And we have entrepreneurs also. We have Susan Petty, who is co-founder and president of Alterock Geothermal. And those are just a few examples of the incredible group that we've attracted here today. So my own background is one where I've been able to combine science and policy and business management. Uh, I landed 25 years ago out of the Yale School of Management into an eco-conscious candy company, a spin-off of Ben and & Jerry's. Um, and I never would have predicted I'd be in candy manufacturing, but I uh, had this great opportunity to combine sustainability and business. And we created jobs for the Brazil nut harvesters in the Amazon rainforest. They could make a living without destroying the rainforest. And we passed on profits to rainforest advocacy organizations. Fast forward a few years, and um, most recently, I was at the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, a quasi-public agency focused on growing the clean energy economy here in Massachusetts. It's about uh, creating real products and services, um, helping entrepreneurs bring ideas to the marketplace with support. And through that work, I got to know Mighty. MIT Energy Initiative, and joined almost a year ago. I had learned uh, through work and partnering with Mighty that Mighty is very strong in the area of helping great ideas become real and get to the market to help us solve these clean energy challenges that we focus on. Um, and we have three pillars, as we call them at Mighty, research, education, and outreach. So research, I'll just give you an example. 
of how we are able to put together our member companies at MITEI with some of the great ideas coming out of MIT. Uh, Professor Don Sadaway is a material scientist here at MIT. He had an idea. He had an idea for a new type of battery, which we all know is very key to moving forward into a world of more renewable generation. Don had an idea for a battery that could be made with elements that were plentiful and domestic and cheap, therefore. And we introduced Don to one of our member companies, Total Corporation, a traditional fossil fuel company, in fact, um, but one that's looking forward to the future of renewable energy. And Don and Total started to work together. Total supported Don with research funding to gestate this idea. And I'm really pleased to say that Don, a few years later now, has a headquarters for his company, Ambry, here in Cambridge. He's developing the liquid metal battery, and he has a manufacturing facility that he cut the ribbon on about a year ago with the governor of Massachusetts in attendance at a facility in Marlborough, Massachusetts. And he has pilot projects underway on Cape Cod and in Hawaii. And so Mighty is really proud to have been part of putting Don together with the resources he needs. Um, Mighty's good at convening. And one other way we convene is in the education area. We created the Energy Miner, and I say we, it was before my time, and others on our staff deserve all the credit. But we created the Energy Miner just a few years ago. It's become one of the most popular miners among the undergrads here. And we connect those undergrads at Mighty with research funding from our members and internships and actual jobs. We're giving them real world experience. We're convinced that these are going to be the future technologists and entrepreneurs and decision makers of tomorrow. So that's, of course, we're here at MIT. We would be in part about education. And finally, we do outreach. So what do I mean by outreach? For us, it's really um, conferences, but primarily we do big white paper studies. And we've done a, a series called the Future of Studies around particular energy technologies. We released the Future of Natural Gas two years ago. And this is authored by a team of faculty that Mighty helps put together, multidisciplinary faculty that can do deep analysis, fact-based analysis. Um, we see ourselves as an honest broker of information that we can bring to decision makers who are trying to grapple with some tough choices about how to deploy um, and how to deal with the challenges posed by some of these technologies. Um, our staff has, uh, two years ago, we got a lot of attention on Capitol Hill with the release of the future of natural gas. And our staff has traveled the globe, actually presenting to many different stakeholders. So we're proud of that. And uh, this fall, I'm excited to say that we'll be releasing the future of solar, another white paper, again, with a great team behind it. And we anticipate getting a lot of attention both on the Hill and in the States, and probably throughout the globe. So Mighty, again, is convening these very expert faculty and researchers here at MIT um, and getting them together to produce very important analysis. Um, so that's, that's what Mighty's about. Um, I think getting back to C3E, it makes sense that Mighty would convene this group of people. And we're really happy that DOE had asked us and that we've continued to do it. Um, we value the network. We know that we're going to need really smart people who are good at building teams and good at making decisions to move us forward. And that means we're going to need a lot of women to help us attack these challenges. So I just want to, again, welcome you all and once again thank our sponsors. Really, we could not be here without them and our staff and DOE. So thanks very much. Okay. So now I have the pleasure of introducing one of the incredibly impressive bios, um, a uh, person that I met at C3 a couple years ago, I noticed tweeted about this particular woman's bio. Um, this is Dr. Asha Tribble. And uh, I saw a tweet on our website saying like, oh my god, check out her bio. Um, and I have to say I had the same reaction. So Asha is the senior advisor to the secretary at the DOE. 
and she works across the department to define and integrate DOE's capabilities and responsibilities for emergency response, incident management, and department and industry preparedness. So she served previously three years on the White House National Security Council, and during that time she was Interim Deputy Homeland Security Advisor, Senior Director for Response, and Director of Critical Infrastructure Protection and Resilience. This is a woman that takes on important and tough assignments. Um, she has supported and led the White House response coordination for Hurricane Sandy and Irene, the Japanese earthquake and tsunami and nuclear disaster, and the West Texas chemical plant explosion. So welcome, Asha, and thank you for your work. This is going to be elegant. <clears throat> oh, hi. <laughs> How about that? Um, so I have a script because I'm here on behalf of DOE, but off script for a moment, oh my gosh, I am so honored to be here. Um, all of these incredibly amazing women. It is so nice to see it. Um, it's also nice to be outside of DC. It's nice to be outside of the Department of Energy. For those of you who have been there, it ain't pretty. <laughs> and this is. So to the ambassadors, to friends, family, we're family, right? Um, welcome and thank you for having me today. Um, I know everyone's busy, but the fact that you are here means that you recognize the importance of your participation and commitment to this effort. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Secretary Moniz and Deputy Secretary Poneman to express the Department of Energy's full support of this program. I would be remiss if I didn't point out that Secretary Moniz is quite proud of C3E having been involved in the creation of the DOE-MIT partnership while at the MIT Energy Initiative. As many of you are aware, C3E was launched by DOE back in 2010 as part of an agreement with all the clean energy ministerial partner countries whose beautiful flags you see here before us today. Together, they agreed that more needs to be done to advance women in the clean energy field, especially in leadership positions. Off script here for a minute, my mom always told me that it's one thing to participate, it's another thing to be in a position of influence. And women need to be in a position of influence, not just sitting in the audience. Right? Go mom! <laughs> so, clearly, the energy revolution will progress further and faster if we're harnessing all facets of our society, not just a subset of it. Today, women make up substantially less than half the clean energy field. And depending on how one defines clean energy, it's probably closer to 20 or 30 percent. Break it down further when you get to leadership positions. It's way less. So we set out to understand the barriers for women in this field and how they can be overcome. And here's a summary of what we heard. Three things. Role models and champions. Women express the need for more role models and more ideas of what a successful career path can look like in a field that continues to evolve. Women also need champions who will go to bat for us and help us navigate the field. I can certainly say that I wouldn't be at DOE if it wasn't for Deputy Secretary Poneman, who came and got me out of the White House, thank goodness, because I was ready. But um, it, was, it was a great honor, but he helped me navigate getting into the Department of Energy. And how do you find role models? Visibility. Women express the need for more visibility and public recognition. There are many women leaders and pioneers doing great work in clean energy, but they're far too often below the radar. As a result, they're less likely to be invited to be keynote speakers at industry conferences, less, less likely to, to headline certain journals, and less likely to sit on boards. You've got to be visible for people to come find you. This needs to change. And number three, knowledge and networks. Women in all corners of energy, of clean energy, express the need for greater depth and breadth of knowledge of the industry and access to opportunities afforded by this type of a network opportunity. And I think we can all relate to this. Sometimes it's just a matter of knowing how to pick up the phone and call somebody. And that's what these kinds of things help us do. So out of these three categories of need grew the C3E program in the US. Out of the need for role models and champions, we created a stellar group of ambassadors who are here today to build a diversity of perspectives in the field. Out of the need for visibility and achievements, we created C3E awards to recognize mid-career women's leadership and accomplishments. This type of recognition can help women with more opportunities to make an even greater impact in the field. And it will also pave the way for women wanting to enter the field 
advance within the field, and advance the field itself. In addition uh, to these actions, uh, we wanted to consider how to cultivate international dimensions of the C3E community. So to enable connections between women in clean energy here in the US and women in clean energy around the world, we launched an online community used by many already, uh, many already called C3Enet.org. It's a useful tool harnessing social media, blogs, and videos to connect clean energy professionals globally. And I would ask all of you who are holding these senior positions, reflect on how you did it. How have things changed in the workplace? Let's use this forum to share your story and help others progress. So on behalf of the Department of Energy, it's wonderful to see you all today, and we're very grateful for your support and your commitment. We're excited to think about what the future holds as a result of C3E, and we look forward to partnering with you to promote the accomplishments and successes of the program. I wish you all a very, very productive symposium, and thank you.